Hello everyone, in this video I'll be going over this formula which can be used to find the area of any regular polygon with a side length of s and n sides. The first thing you want to realize is that for any polygon with n sides, for any regular polygon with n sides, you can form n isosceles triangles inside this polygon using a structure similar to these two structures. For example, take a look at the one at the left here. This is the image of a regular octagon which obviously has eight sides. And as you can see here, we have formed eight isosceles triangles inside this polygon. At the right is the image of a regular hexagon, which obviously has six sides. And as you can see here, we have formed six isosceles triangles inside this hexagon. If you wonder how these are isosceles, let me remind you that all equilateral triangles are isosceles triangles, but not all isosceles triangles are equilateral triangles. The reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people know the fact that regular hexagons have six equilateral triangles inside. These equilateral triangles are technically isosceles, so we're going to be using the name isosceles because it applies on all regular polygons. Okay, uh, and forget about this triangle for now. Let me assure you that the formula works on it, but it's going to confuse you if we, if we take a look at it now. So we're going to focus on all other regular polygons. What I'll be saying soon will apply on all the other polygons, and this one as well, but forget about it for now, okay? Because it will confuse you. Whatever. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the proof. Suppose we have here a regular polygon, and we do not know what polygon is this, okay? Or we do not know what polygon this is. So it has n sides, and each side has a side length of s. But we do not know what polygon is this. Okay. Uh, so, to get the area of this polygon, we can get the area of one triangle, and then multiply it by n, because there are n triangles that are exact. Okay, good. So let's take, uh, let's take this triangle here that I've drawn in red and extracted outside and examine it in more detail. Okay. This bottom side here, if you notice, is the same as the side length of the polygon. Okay. And again, I have to remind you that we do not know that this is an octagon. Okay. We just know that this is a regular polygon and we do not know what polygon it, it is. Okay. So this bottom side is the side length of the polygon, as you can see, it's corresponding to this. And this top angle here is the same as, uh, is the same as this top angle here. And all these smaller, uh, all of this, all of these small angles here are the same, basically. Okay? They're congruent angles. Their sum is 360 because they make a full revolution like this. Um, and there are n angles of this type, okay? So, there are n triangles, and each of these triangles has this same angle at the top, okay? So, there are n angles of this type in this polygon, and their sum is 360. So, we can write a nice expression for this angle in terms of n which is 360 over n, okay? Because as I said, the sum of all these angles is 360, and there are n angles of this type. Okay, good. Now let's draw an altitude in this triangle, or a height. Okay, so here is a height. And since this is an isosceles triangle, it bisects the, this side into two, and it also bisects this top angle into two equal angles. And each of, this, each of these smaller angles is going to be the same as this angle, but divided by two. So, let me write this a little bit neater. I want to make it in a, bit, in a neater way. I want to delete this point here. Okay, it doesn't want to get deleted. Whatever. So let's draw the altitude again. This smaller angle here 
is half times 360 over n. Right? Because it's bisected. The, the, the full angle was 360 over n, and this one is half of that. And if we simplify, this is going to be 180 over n. Okay? Let me try, try to write it in a better way. So 180 over n, like this. Good. Okay. And as you can see here, this side at the bottom is bisected into two. So each of these smaller sides is 0.5s because it's half of the full side. 0.5s. Okay, I hope this is clear. This is a 5 and the other one is an s. Okay, 0.5s. Let me write it in a better way. The problem is I'm using my mouse, so it's hard to write. 0.5s. Okay, good. Now let's take a look at tan 180 over n, this angle. We, ne we need to take a look at the tangent of this angle, this smaller angle, not the full angle. So the tan of 180 over n sorry about the slow writing the tan of that is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay? The opposite of this angle is 0.5s 0.5s and the adjacent is the height. We do not know the height at the moment so we're going to refer to it as h and we're going to write h here. Okay? So, so far we have determined that these angles inside add up to 360 and there are n of these angles so each one of these angles is 360 over n and we knew that after drawing the height this angle becomes bisected into 280 over n degrees or whatever whatever the unit of measurement and we also knew that this side is bisected into two sides each of which is 0.5 s and we knew that tan 180 over n which is tan one of these angles is equal to I mean, one of these smaller angles is equal to 0.5s over h. Good. Now, we need to solve for h here in this expression. We need to isolate h. Okay? So, after isolating h, we get h is equal to 0.5s. over tan 180 over n, okay? Tan 180 over n. Okay? Pretty good. Now, as I said earlier, our target to get the area of this regular polygon is to get the area of one triangle and then multiplied by n because there are n triangles of this type. Okay? So, to get the area of the triangle, we use the common formula, which is half bh. Okay? Half times base times height. This is a very common formula for the area of the triangle. Let's use that. So, let me scroll down here. The area of the triangle, area of the triangle is equal to half, half times, times what? Times the base, which is S, times the height, which is this expression, this big expression, half times S times 0.5s 
over 1080 over n. Okay. Good. Now let's simplify this a little bit. The area of the triangle is equal to this two. Uh, well, first let's take a look at this s. It's going to go. It's going to be multiplied at the top here at the numerator, which will result in zero point five s squared. And then this 2 here is going to be multiplied in the denominator, so it's going to result in 2 tan 180 over n. So, we get 0 0.5 s squared over 2 tan 180 over n. Sorry if my handwriting is very bad, because uh, the reason for that is because I don't have a touch screen. Okay, now let's simplify, let's simplify this a little bit more. I'll just write equal immediately, equals. This 0 0.5 can be written as half, right? Half times S squared over 2 tan 180 over M, right? Because this half is the same as 0 0.5, and it was multiplied at the top, which is the same as just multiplying it outside, okay? Tan 180 over n. Then obviously, the 2 is going to be multiplied by the 2, which will result in s squared over 4 tan 180 over n. Sorry about the bad handwriting again. Oh man, I'm struggling to write. Okay. So, all of that is under the same fraction bar. Okay, so basically this is the final area of one triangle in this polygon, okay? But we said earlier that there are n triangles in this polygon. N triangles. So... To get the area of the polygon, we multiply this area by n, because this is the area of one triangle and there are n triangles. So we multiply whatever we have here by n, and when we, we are multiplying by something that's just not a fraction, we just multiply in the numerator immediately. n could be, a, well, n cannot be a fraction in this case, because it's the number of triangles. So yeah, so at the end, the area of the full polygon you know, I'm, I cannot draw it, but yeah. The area of the full polygon is s squared n over 4 tan 180 over n. So, I hope you have understood this proof. This is the proof of this wonderful form formula. It's a very important formula because it can come in tests such as the ACT International Subject Test Math Level 1. And it can come in other tests and in general it's brilliant. And it's especially brilliant if you understand from where it came. So, to recap, the first thing is for any regular polygon with n sides, we can form n isosceles triangles. Next thing is, for each of these triangles, the bottom side is the side length, and the top angle, the full top angle, is the same as this one here. And the sum of all these top angles is 360. Okay. And we said that there are n triangles. And in each of these triangles, there is one angle of this type. So in total, there are n angles that are similar to th these ones that I'm pointing here. So there are n angles of this type. And so each of these angles can be written as 360 over n because there are n angles and their sum is 360. And after drawing the height, we have bisected this 360 over n into 280 over n's, because this is an isosceles triangle, so the height bisects this angle and bisects the bottom side. 
and so the bottom side is also bisected into two 0 0.5 asses okay and then after that we have examined the tan of 180 over n which is 0 0.5 s over the height which we do not know and then after isolating for h we got this expression 0 0.5 s over tan 180 over n and then we started obtaining the area of the triangle half times base which is s times the height which we've obtained here and then after simplifying we got this then uh, after further simplifying we got s squared over 4 tan 180 over n and then we multiplied this result by n because there are n triangles i hope this was clear if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you don't if you don't like it please explain what is lacking in this video Thank you and goodbye.